Hi friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge and we've got a smaller fixed blade again today. Apparently they intended this as a neck knife because you've got cordage and no belt loop anything on the Kydex sheath. This is the Sea Snake by Artisan Cutlery. This is, uh, what's his name, Michael... Oh, I've got the page upside down here. I'll turn this back over. Elmer. Michael Elmer is the designer of this. I've never seen any of his other stuff before. Definitely going to check him out on Instagram. But uh, yeah, AR RPM 9 steel. So we got stainless steel. We've got a small fixed blade knife. And I found it to be surprisingly convenient. Very, very useful for a lot of different tasks. So I'll be doing a review of this. But I just want to tell you a little something about you know what I do on Canadian Cutting Edge. I don't watch knife reviews for the knives that I will be reviewing. And so basically I don't watch knife reviews for knives that are under around $60 because I try to keep that as the limit. You know, being a budget knife channel, I want to review stuff that's in the lower budget range. And the ceiling for 2022 was around 60 US dollars. Not a hard ceiling, but a fairly firm ceiling. And uh, so I've not seen any reviews on this knife or anything. But I saw this short video by a very respected reviewer for, you know, a totally different knife uh, this afternoon, this morning. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's 2 o'clock now. Th this morning I saw it, and he repeated that, that myth about sharpening that uh, you want to match the factory edge. <laughs> no, <laughs> you don't want to match the factory edge. You might want to match the edge of a knife made in a small shop, like a small business knife, you know, like a shop of, you know, 5, 10, 1, you know, 15 different people who work at this one small knife making business. But stuff that's mass produced in China, even if it's stuff that costs you, you know, 200 bucks, 500 bucks, I don't know, you don't want to try to match a factory edge on any knife. At the fewer than, you know, 3 or 4 percent of the knives that I've seen in my lifetime had edges that you'd want to match. Now, I don't know why, but when I started my channel way back in 2016, I said the same kind of stuff. I talked about matching the edges. And, you know, I don't know why I said it way back then. But, and so, you know, I've got patience for people that say it now. It's just nonsense, really. If you start measuring the grind angles, the, the edge angles on knives, like this knife, you know, one side's really shallow, the other side's, you know, pretty good, but it vacillates over the course of this straight blade between several degree back and forth and then back again. I don't want to match the angle on this knife. Does that mean the knife's bad? No, no, no. It just means that factory sharpening is bogus. They don't do good jobs of sharpening knives in factories. They make things sharp, sure. And I know a lot of you guys, regular viewers, you've heard me do this song and dance so many times you're tired of it. But occasionally I get new viewers and you've not seen my song and dance before. So thank you for your patience with me. Let's get to the tabletop and take a good close look at this thing. Come on down. Let's begin with a size comparison. I don't usually do size comparisons on my fixed blade knives, but here, let's compare it to the Ontario Rat 1. Anyways, a knife that a lot of people know. Let's line up the beginning, since we don't have a pivot point, the end of the handle, the beginning of the blade there. Yeah, it's a small knife. It's, it's quite a bit smaller than this Rat 1. You got, you know, an inch less, roughly, of cutting edge. You know, it's smaller in just about every way that you can imagine the knife would be. This is not a big, heavy knife. Uh, I'll go through all the specs. I've done my own measurements at home so that you know that they're accurate. A lot of knife stores and even knife companies sometimes make mistakes. I don't know if they're intentional or they're just mistakes, but you know, it's not always the specs that you hear online of what the thing actually is, but we're doing what it actually is. Before we go any further, let's take a look at the sheath. We've got this Kydex Friction Taco Style sheath. We do have a drain hole right there and these are standard measurements uh, that are spaced out so you can, you know, if you want to use something like this, it'll fit. You know, even using the last hole right here, if you want to, it'll fit to, you know, mount one of these 
or you know this this is the real steel clip i showed it in recent videos of course you can use an alti clip or other things if you want to turn this thing into a boot knife or a belt knife that's easily done and certainly they intend it as a neck knife this cordage though um if i decide to keep this knife and i'd like to keep all the knives that i review but i just can't keep the vast majority because i have to sell them so i can buy more knives to review that's why i'm so very thankful for my supporters it really helps me helps the channel out and helps me grow the channel yes well, that's what i wanted to say since the winner of last month's giveaway that i did yesterday or the day before has not responded yet leo k leo k you are one of my youtube member supporters check youtube.com slash Canadian Cutting Edge slash community and you're going to see the information or just email me jake at Canadian Cutting Edge.com and uh, we can make arrangements for you to get your prize. So congrats to Leo. Anyhow back to the knife. I think I'd like to keep this. This is a nice knife. Uh, I'd use it probably as a neck knife because I like neck knives and this would be a good secondary knife. We've got this nice work. Oh I was sorry I got ahead of myself. I wanted to show you this. It's not really loose, a little bit loose if I hold it just the wrong way. So there is a little bit of play in there. Uh, I could, you know, heat it up and put it in a press and squeeze it in again and make it tighter, but not bad. You do have a little bit of a flare there to put your thumb in there and you know, get it to release. So there's that. It's, it's an okay sheath. No big issues. I'd much rather use 550 paracord with breakaway tabs if I wore it around my neck that way if it ever did get snagged on something it would just break away and not choke me to death but the knife is the main thing we want to see the steel type on this thing AR RPM 9 uh, the handle comes in three colors so uh, one of the colors is still in stock I think it's the green sort of like an OD green color that's still in stock at White Mountain Knives and it's a small knife $39.99 US at White Mountain Knives you save 10% $35.99, so $36 American dollars for this in the United States. That's roughly $49 Canadian. And I'll list Canadian prices right here. Back to the knife. I'm bouncing back and forth, aren't I? I'm feeling kind of like a yo-yo today. Anyhow, knife. We've got a full flat grind on this Warncliffe blade, a straight edge. It's not perfectly straight, but it's a straight edge. We've got a forward choil here, and then we've got your main index finger choil that you can use this way. My hands are extra large, just barely extra large, mind you, and I can just barely get a four finger grip back here and certainly a full four finger grip, you know, when I grip it like this. So that's pretty good. Not very heavy. Uh, the thickness of the blade, you get most of the thickness to about right there, about two thirds of the way down, it starts really tapering to the tip. That tip is somewhat delicate, so uh, be careful with that. It's a great little EDC knife, like for light tasks, this thing works very, very well. Fairly thin behind the edge, and we'll give you that measurement later on. And uh, the badging on the knife, nice and small. It says China right there, really small. I think more knife companies should be putting the country of manufacturer on the blade itself and you know just small like that is just fine and up here it says ser i guess for serial but it's really a model number 1842 and then underneath there ar rpm 9 and then beside there is the designer's logo michael elmer's logo right there and that's all you get on that side and this side you just get the artisan cutlery kind of graphic nice and small there's a slight swedge on the blade handle, the blade part and the handle. The steel is just slightly exposed. The G10 a bit sort of in, very well rounded, very soft to the touch, quite thin. And then we've got these screws right here. I've not taken it apart yet, and I will take it apart on camera. It's not T6, that's great. It's a T8. There you go, T8. So why don't we just do it right now? Let's see. Yep. And it's not spinning. I don't know if it could spin or not. We'll find that out in a minute. So yeah, there was a little bit of Loctite in there. Let's see if this side will come out just as easily. Yep, there we go. Coming out no problem. And I don't know if I can get this 
pry tool underneath there. Um, let's just push that pin out if we can. And it doesn't want to move. It's really tight. So let's screw that in a few turns and then try to push it through. That is tight. Oh, there we go. That side popped finally. And I'll do the same thing to this other side, although I will edit it out because it's eating up a lot of time. There you go. It's taken apart. Uh, these are just friction fit round. It looks like they might have used some adhesive in there. Or maybe the Loctite got, you know, in along the side of the main, you know, stock of the, the post. Anyhow, they are very tight fitting. And, uh, you know, they took a bit of pressure to get back out. But it's possible. You can take it all the way apart. So if you do get one of the light versions of the G10, you could dye it because it comes apart, not a problem. And, uh, you know, the Loctite, yeah, not a big deal. It's it's a tight fit, but these are good quality screws, good quality stainless steel. So, yeah, decently made. A little bit of skeletonizing in there. I would have wished that they made those a little bit bigger. Maybe spaced them out so they could have put four in there, and that would have made it the balance point be more to my liking, but it's not bad. I'm going to put it back together now. I've spoken briefly about how it cuts, but like I was saying, I didn't show you the balance point before. It's right there. Pretty much, you know, I like it to be over where your index finger grabs or slightly be forward to that. So yeah, it could have been skeletonized a bit more. Another thing that there's nothing of on this there's no lanyard option. Now, it is a smaller knife. It probably doesn't need a lanyard option, but I wish that was my choice. You know, for most pocket knives, I don't use lanyards, but on fixed blades, I tend to like lanyards. And there's not that option on this knife. But the price range being, you know, 40 bucks US, you know, and then you get your discounts on top of that yet. That's not bad. Yeah, let's do the measurements. The weight of this knife, this thing is 65 grams, 2.29 ounces. Yeah, not bad. The sheath and the cordage that comes from the factory, 20 grams, that's 0.71 ounces. Together, 85 grams, three ounces pretty much on the nose. So yeah, it's a light knife. The factory sharpness, I got a score of 145 best. That's the average score. That's pretty much average from all the knives that I review. So well done there. And uh, the cutting edge length, 61.6 millimeters, 2.43 inches. And then the blade length, tip to the closest spot on the handle, is 82.2 millimeters, 3.24 inches. The thickness of the blade stock, 2.48 millimeters, 0 0.0975, so just shy of a tenth of an inch. The blade depth is widest right here, 23.5 millimeters, 0 0.924 of an inch. How thick is it behind the grind? Measured in three places. The average is 0.38 millimeters, 15 thousandths of an inch. And the grind angles. I wrote them on a different piece of paper. I'll be right back. Grind angles. Well, this side, well, I don't know which side's done better than the other. Uh, this side's got an average of 13.6 degrees, 15.2 at the heel, 12.0 degrees at the tip. And it's a consistent change all the way along. That's 3.2 degrees of change. This side here is 19 degrees along the length. It started at 19.6, 17.7 in the middle, and back to 19.7 up there. So two degrees of wobble, uh, 2.1 degrees of wobble along the length. It's not terrible. Thankfully, it's fairly straight. It's not hard to, you know, make this thing have a nice, beautiful, consistent angle all the way throughout. I'd probably do this thing at 17 degrees per side as I'm mostly an urban user, you know, because of my, you know, medical issues and mobility disabilities. I'm not a cowboy or anything like that. And even though I live in a small town in, you know, farm country next to the mountains or next to the Canadian Rocky Mountains, yeah, I still call myself probably an urban EDC kind of carry. And I think, you know, a shallower angle would be pretty nice. Of course, not shallower in this side, that's 13.6, but shallower than this side. Anyhow, that's the grind angles from the factory. 
please don't try to match them. You're going to be pulling your hair out. <laughs> Literally, you're going to be going nuts trying to match the grand angles on this thing. The rest of the measurements, the handle length, and it's the front of the G10 to the end of the steel, since the steel sticks out a little bit right here. 92 millimeters even, 3.62 inches. The uh, handle thickness right here, it's about 10.1 millimeters, a little bit more on top of the screws, but 10.1 millimeters, 0.397, so you know, about 0.4 of an inch. And the handle depth, Within the grip area, I'm not counting this piece sticking out. That's that's probably the widest. But back here, this is the widest within the main grip area. 19.4 millimeters, 0.763 of an inch. The grip area on the main handle is about 8 centimeters, about 3 and a quarter inches. If you add the forward choil there, it's about 10 and a half centimeters, a little over 4 inches. And the total length of this knife from tip to tail, 173 millimeters, 6.8. 81 inches. What are my thoughts? What are my feelings about this knife? I'm a fan. I like it. I wish they would have sent along uh, something like an ulti clip, you know, something like maybe this clip. Yeah, this I don't really like. It's too big and bulky, but something so that you could use this thing also as, you know, on your waist, a uh, scout carry maybe, as a boot knife maybe, as well as neck knife. Sure, the price would have gone up a little bit, but I think that would have been appreciated. Uh, for the most part, yeah, that's pretty good. And I will be swapping out this cordage if I keep this knife. The handle's comfortable. The steel is a decent stainless steel. I do prefer stainless steel on my neck knives. Why? Because neck knives sometimes get carried underneath the clothes and next to your skin, you don't want to have carbon steel there's a good chance you're going to cause some corrosion. Although I like carbon steel a lot on fixed blade knives, I don't like it on pocket knives because they go in pockets where you get hot and sweaty. And neck knives as well, they can get in hot and sweaty areas, so I prefer stainless steel, and this is a pretty good budget stainless steel. I think Michael Elmer is a pretty good designer. I like this design a lot. I want to see more of his stuff. So congratulations, Michael. And uh, the grip in the hand, it's good for short-term use. If you wanted to use this thing for even 20 minutes, it would be annoying because of how thin it is, especially using the forward choil for that long. Uh, your hand would get tired, especially if you've got hands my size. Maybe you've got women's small hands and you'd find this comfortable for the long term. For most of us, I think this is one of those short duration EDC type knives, maybe a backup you know, knife, but it's pretty good for what it is. The jimping here, I'd like that jimping to go further along the blade. It's good here, and I like the jimping. I just wish there was a little bit more of it. I wish there was a lanyard option at least, you know, just a hole back here, and that'd be great. And that's about it, but it's a nice light task knife. Good steel, great design, decent sheath. Could use some more options. That's what I think of this thing. What do you think of it? Do you have one of these? What do you do with it? How much do you like it? Let me know in the comments below, and if you have any other questions, I'll try to answer them as best as I can, because I read all the comments, and I answer 99.9% .9 of them. Thank you for sticking around. Thank you to my supporters of the channel. Congratulations again to Leo K, and please contact me, buddy. And remember, friends, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb.